How is it that a tiny little habit can make us feel so out of control with our own behavior? In the blink of an eye, we find ourselves yet again, mindlessly scrolling, eating junk food, or noticing that it's an hour after we should be asleep. Today, I'm gonna figure out how to regain control of this area of my life, because nothing is worse than having a habitual negative behavior that happens without me even noticing. Habits are powerful. So first I needed to learn what are the basic building blocks of a habit. This will help us reverse engineer and make a system that actually works. The building blocks of a habit are in four parts. First, we have a cue. Maybe it's a notification from your phone and our brain runs a simulation on what it thinks would happen if we follow that cue. In this case, going on social media and it decides that it would in fact make us feel better. And this creates craving because now there's a gap between where we are and where our brain says we could be. Our response is clicking the notification, which gives us the reward of a little dopamine hit. Oh, and all of that just happened in about a half a second. It's also why you clicked on this video. Cue, craving, response, reward. Now that I had learned how a habit works, it was time to move on to the next step. So first I identified which habit do I want to break, which for me is picking on the edges of my fingers, which kind of destroys them. So then I started searching for a system because after all, if there's a system for building a habit, then there has to be a system for breaking a habit, right? As it turns out, there is. If the cue is what kicks this whole thing off, then by removing the cue, we remove the sequential actions. And that's why step number one is make it invisible. You will almost never be able to forget a habit. I'm sure you've seen this where you have a, a dead habit that just resurrects in the blink of an eye. And so since we can't fully forget a habit, we need to make it as invisible as possible. And what's so great about this is we can remove these cues once and we basically don't have to worry about them in the future. For example, you throw away the donuts, you disable the notifications. It's a one-time action. And once you do it, it locks your future behavior in with, with very little effort. A way of summing this up is a disciplined environment is better than large amounts of willpower. Okay, so this advice sounded really easy and awesome until I wrote down some of my cues for this habit. And that's when I realized we kind of have a problem. Cue number one, fingers. Yeah, I'm not removing those. Cue number two, stress. Cue number three, boredom. Cue number four, focus. I'm guessing you kind of see the problem here. And this is why the hardest habits to break are the ones that have cues intertwined with our daily life. To break habits like this, we need to go to step two, make it unattractive. Okay, so since like the beginning of our existence, we've basically been motivated by two main things. What moves us towards pleasure and what moves us away from pain. And this right here is exactly what our brain is doing during the second stage of the habit, which is craving. After our brain runs a simulation of what it thinks would happen if we followed the cue, it decides, yes, binging that Netflix show would in fact remove pain from my life right now. Therefore, I should watch that show. The trick is taking over this process and learning to do it manually. Sure, Netflix will probably make you feel better, but it'll also make you feel like trash. So we have to learn how to reframe the, the craving so that it's unattractive and so that we don't want to move towards it. We make a habit unattractive by highlighting the benefits of avoiding that habit or by highlighting the negatives of following through. And the best way to do this is every time you notice yourself moving towards that craving, take that craving and expand it to illuminate the negatives. Let's take the Netflix example. So identify the craving, which is watching Netflix would make me feel better and expand it. Watching Netflix would make me feel better in the short term, but it would also make me feel like trash afterwards. So what can I do instead that would make me feel better, but that wouldn't have these negative drawbacks? So there what you've done is you've highlighted something that makes the habit a little bit more unattractive, while at the same time redirecting your behavior towards something better. What's really interesting is I noticed a difference the very first time I did this with my habit. I was working and I found myself picking on my fingers and I said, 
Okay, so I'm bored and I'm mutilating my fingers because I need something to do. So what could I do instead that would be a better option? And I was like, huh, you know, I actually really enjoy pen spinning and that would be a much better option and it would keep my fingers busy so I wouldn't absentmindedly do it. And it was amazing what just like even acknowledging the drawbacks of what this does, it like really redirected my attention and my behavior. Every time you do this, it, it breaks the pattern of that habit and it makes it just a little bit weaker. Alrighty, cool deal. Well, <laughs> thanks for the tips. Uh, what are you doing? Let's face it, first two steps, probably good enough. So instead of listening to the other two, I'm gonna go watch this other video. Yeah, I don't think you wanna do that. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Cause you're gonna lose your attention in your video? <laughs> Got him. <laughs> no. Well, yes, but no. You see, when I was researching this, I almost quit right here too, but I'm really glad that I didn't. And here's why. You see, steps one and two will get you through like the first like week or so, but steps three and four make it incredibly difficult to return back to that habit in the long term, especially when your willpower is low and you kind of want to go back to it. Okay, but make it quick, because I'm getting tired. Got it. Okay, so after you remove the cues, you make it unattractive, and then what you want to do is you want to make it difficult. We humans are notoriously good at backsliding. And right now, when you actually want to quit this habit is the best time to plan for the future when maybe your willpower is kind of low and you're not quite as eager. In Atomic Habits, James Clear says this, success is less about making the good habits easy and more about making the bad habits hard. And the best way to do this is by increasing the friction or the number of steps needed to follow through and actually go to that habit. Doing things like setting time restrictions on your phone or setting your phone so that, you know, 30 minutes before when you should be going to bed is, you know, when your phone stops notifying you, stops sending you notifications. It creates a little bit more friction for you to actually follow through on that habit. Basically, if we're gonna sum this up, we would say don't rely on willpower when you can change the environment instead. Hmm. But what if I find myself still going back to the habit? I'm pretty resourceful, you know. <laughs> I do know, in fact. And in that case, we have to make it unsatisfying. Okay, so let's pretend that you like really blew it, right? You didn't stop the cue, you didn't reframe the association so that it was unattractive, and your efforts to make it difficult weren't sufficient. The final trick up our sleeve is to make the habit itself as immediately unsatisfying as possible to engage in. And the reason for this is because we repeat bad habits because they serve us in some way. And that makes them hard to abandon. So the best way is to increase the speed of the punishment associated with that behavior. Mm, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so like there can't be a gap between the action and the consequences of that action. Ooh, <laughs> I just made five bucks. Really? How? Because you just ate a taki. <laughs> um, wait, what? Oh, there we go again. Huh? Right. So we set this up like two weeks ago. You know, the whole like make it difficult thing. I forgot about that. And you can do this in any number of ways. But what it does is it retrains the association that you have for that habit. So now instead of pleasure coming from that habit, you experience pain. For example, if I had to give a dollar to my friend every time that, you know, I like pick on my fingers, it wouldn't take very long before I would literally be repulsed by that behavior because I don't like losing money. The more local, concrete, tangible, and immediate, the more likely it is to influence behavior. And the beautiful part about this is, if you actually want to break that habit, you will hold yourself to it. Okay, so remember, for the cue, we want to make it invisible. For craving, we make it unattractive. Our response, make it difficult. And the reward, make it unsatisfying. Once you've learned how to remove bad habits, it's time to fill that space with good habits. So check out this video here and you'll learn how to do exactly that. Mm. Squeaky clean.